everybody, Alex Newman here with Conversations That Matter at The New American. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have a very special guest today. Uh, I met him through uh, some work we were doing in Illinois on uh, getting the children out of the public schools, reaching out to pastors, and uh, he was uh, up there and very interested, and so we connected that way, and I found out he's just doing amazing work. His name is David Lowry. Uh, he is the new co-pastor of a church with the Reverend Al Sampson. Um, the only, as I understand, minister that was ever ordained by the Reverend um, uh, Martin Luther King. Um, and so uh, one of the things that he's doing is fighting the uh, the sex ed madness going on in Illinois. He's also got a wonderful organization focused on the family. Uh, David, thank you so much for being with us. And, and tell us about what you're doing, first of all, on the family front. I know your family has been a passion of yours for a long time. You've been involved in this ministry for a long time. Uh, tell us what you're doing in the in the realm of family, why you're doing it, why you think this is so important. Well, it's important because the family structure has been under attack. Um, marriage between a man and a woman, which God created. When Barack Obama created that law that said that man and man can marry, um, it sort of took a bad turn because the homosexuals from that point started to implement other laws that benefited them. And it came against God's people. It came against what he put out there that marriage is between a man and a woman. And so it spilled over into the schools. And about three years ago, I got involved with a family who came to me and asked me for help. And since then, we've been sounding the alarm uh, about this distributive, this com comprehensive education, uh, which is basically teaching children to be homosexuals, pedophiles, and transgenders. And so once we got involved, uh, we started to work with other people to be able to see why the legislators even voted for something like this. Because when we saw the literature, um, it's basically porno being taught to kindergartners and uh, grades all the way up into the 12th. And so we've been in this fight and we're going to make sure that the families stay intact. And God's, what God meant for marriage between a man and a woman, we're going to continue to fight to make that happen and do what's necessary to remove this law off the books because they're after our children. And I just think that that's something that, that uh, that's appalling to me. As you know, Christ said that those who would harm one of the little ones, it would be better for them to have a milestone around their neck and throw it into the sea. So what they've done with this law, we're hoping to put that milestone around their neck and throw them into the sea and continue uh, to raise our children uh, the American way, the way God taught us to raise our children. Yeah, tell us about this law, Pastor, if you would. I know it, it seems to be one of the most extreme in the entire country right now. It was just recently signed by Governor Pritzker up there. And I think outside of Illinois, a lot of people don't even realize this is going on yet. Uh, break down some of it, if you would, and, and why it's so concerning to you. Well, when we first got involved with this thing, um, uh, one of my clients, I work with a law firm as an investigator. Uh, one of the clients came to us, and this man son was introduced to this in his health class and so the child was you know a little bit taken back by the fact that they was teaching him how to use a condom to insert his penis into another boy anus also in this bill it teaches children how to give oral sex uh from kindergarten up to the 12th grade they're teaching them how to consent uh their idea of safe sex is abortion and using condoms and so when we got the gist of this whole thing and we started to look at it, we said, no, this is inappropriate for the schools. And that children, the sad thing, Alex, is this. You would have not allowed prayer in schools, you know, and yet you would allow an abomination law like this to try to teach our kids and sway our children away from God and sway them away from the families. Now, one of the things that's horrible about this law is that Say, for instance, you know, children are so confused that different ages, 9, 10, 12 years old, they're not quite sure of their sexuality. Some of them aren't. And so say, for instance, if one of your kids say, well, you know, I think I might have some girl tendencies. Or I want to be a girl. In this law, if this child goes to the outreach counselor uh, at the school and make a statement like that, the law allows for these counselors to be able to help your child deceive the parents 
and they will start giving your kids hormone blockers, puberty shots, and all of those things to transition, and that's what the word transing means, to transition your son or your daughter to a girl or a boy. And so when we looked at it in a totality, it's like, this has nothing to do with education. Uh, this has everything to do to indoctrinate the children, uh, to get them, uh, they're trying to normalize homosexuality. And so what this does is it plants a seed in the children's mind to make them think that being a homosexual is okay. And you know as well as I do, it's not okay because it's not the way that God intended for man and woman to be. And so this law is a horrible law that takes away the rights of the parents uh, and, and, and it gives uh, the children a false sense of what marriage and having a relationship would be. Um, a lot of the children now, um, they're starting to kick against this thing. We've been putting it out there. Governor Prisker, um, he, he did a lot of fanfare. He had some gay laws that he passed and he called press conferences. You know, he had the magic pen and he struck these laws uh, into effect. But the comprehensive sex education, which was Bill SB 818, it sat on its desk because of all the uh, noise that we were making about it. And so he signed the bill with no fanfare. He didn't call the media. He didn't call anybody. He signed it so that people wouldn't know it was signed. But we and our watchdogs made sure that when he signed it, we made it known to the world what he had done. So we are prepared to fight all the way to the Supreme Court uh, to stop this, this, this horrible, uh, I call it porno, in the schools for our kids. And so um, it, was a, it was a blessing that I met you through the Illinois Family Institute, and now we've started to gather other pastors. Uh, like I said, Reverend Sampton uh, came in with us. Uh, there's other pastors, there's other leaders uh, out in the community, Gator Bradley, who uh, is a activist, and he works with a lot of the gangs across the country as well as myself. And so now a lot of parents are saying, we didn't know about it. And that was the whole reason why this bill was put through by the legislators is because if they had uh, done their jobs, if the legislators had uh, looked at this bill and then contacted the parents and held a town hall meeting, they should have got input from the community first before they even passed this thing. It should have never been considered as a bill. But you know, when when you have a, a, a crooked governor and you have men and women who do not love or respect God, then you will have this type of activity uh, to try to steal our children and, and, and put us in a place where we no longer have parental rights. Uh, to me, this is the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, and we know how that turned out. So I'm asking people to get involved with us so we can hold them accountable and make sure our children are not learning this lewd sexual activity that's done in folks' bedroom and should not be taught in our schools. Yeah, excellent, uh, Pastor. Thank you for that. And uh, before I let you go, I want to know a little bit about uh, an organization that you created. Uh, it's called L Living and Driving While Black. Tell us, uh, what is the organization? What does it do? Why did you create it? Well, I was a successful businessman. I was in a town called Rock Island, Illinois. Um, and I was taking one of my employees home and I had a meeting with General Mills at my restaurant. And so I had a new Lexus and the police officers pulled up to a stop sign. The police officer saw me there. I waited for him to move, he didn't. And so when I pulled off from the stop sign, he got behind me. And uh, it was a horrible experience because you know, he, he felt that I was a drug dealer. I was dressed like I am now in business attire. And so um, he held me there for like 45 minutes. And I had this meeting. So I got out of the car and went back and said, hey, what's going on? You know, I'm not, I don't know why you stopped me. So he made me get back in the car. And finally, he came to the car and demanded that I get out. And I questioned him why, because my brother-in-law was the sergeant of the Rock Island Police Department. And so he said he found residue of cocaine on my license, which was a lie. But um, to make a long story short, I, I, after that happened to me, a, a judge friend of mine knew me and he told them, no, this man is a man of God. You got the wrong person this time. And so the case was thrown out 
And after that, I thought about how many other young black men, women, white, uh, Hispanic, it doesn't matter, we are Americans, who were being pulled over and racially profiled. And so I created the organization Driving Wild Black. I became the president of the NAACP in Rock Island County. Uh, I started a national campaign through them. I was in Washington, D.C. at the Redeem the Dream uh, 37th year anniversary of Dr. King's March on Washington. And I reached out for a lot of people to help me with this. And so um, I got a lot of other pastors involved. I got a lot of activists involved. And so after that, we decided that we would create an organization that would write legislation um, that would combat some of the laws that was being put out there. Uh, I was with Reverend Al Sharpton for about two years. And what Reverend Al taught me, and I just to be brutally honest, he taught me all the things not to do as a pastor. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I started living and, uh, living and driving while black after people came to me. They was going to stores. Uh, they was being followed by the owners of the stores. And it was just a mess. People was bringing cases. So uh, I thought living conditions and driving conditions are the worst for black people on the, this planet. So that's how we got our name, living and driving while black. And since then, Alex, we have been in the forefront. Um, I'm a two-time president of the NAACP. I also work with Reverend Al Sharpton and Johnny Cochran and them out in New York back in 2000s uh, with the National Action Network. And so we decided that we, we're gonna, not going to be like the traditional civil rights organizations like the NAACP. It's too many, um, too many stops to really help somebody. If you help somebody, you got to go get an approval for this and approval for that. So I created my own uh, organization, and uh, we've been taking cases all across the country, dealing with discrimination, police brutality, wrongful death, anything that can happen. Uh, people were calling me about it, and so we we decided that you know we would get a national charter, and we we went to do that, and we've been totally successful. Um, not only do we write legislation and we monitor things like this school thing, but we go out into the community. Um, a lot of pastors here in Chicago are afraid to go out into the community and sit down and talk to these young men who are killing and don't have any future or don't have families. Well, our organization went out. Uh, I started to build a relationship with a lot of the guys from the street organizations, Gangster Disciples, Black Disciples, uh, Vice Lord, Stones. And once they realized that I was a product. <laughs> I was a product of a society. Um, I could have been the same way. I grew up in Chicago and in Inglewood. Uh, there was a lot of opportunities for me to fail, but God held me true to what my parents taught me. And I was able to graduate out of high school at 15. I bought my first business at 17, was a restaurant. Pretty much retired at 40, but I go out into the community and I talk to men and I get them back into society. A lot of times these guys just need somebody to point the direction. And that's what we do. We go out and we listen to their problems and then we have the resources to help them change their lives. And I just think that that's what the Lord would want us to do. That's what Jesus did. His church was the world and he went out and saved the sinners. And so that's my mission is to bring some type of justice and some type of equality in the black community so that we can be self-sufficient. Um, and a lot of times with, with my organization, I call a spade a spade. I, I, I'm just, you know, we bring a lot of pain to our own self with the killing and, and, and not holding the uh, uh, politicians accountable and not making them make sure that there are job opportunities and schools that they can go to to learn. So we have just taken the forefront and said, you know what? We're going to step out on faith, and we know God is going to lead us through this, and we've been totally successful. Uh, this year alone, we've probably stopped over 50 to 60 murders uh, that we got involved in used conflict resolution with the two warring parties, and we saved a lot of lives this year, and we want to continue to do that. But I want to take this whole thing across the country. Uh, in the major cities uh, with Reverend Sampson, that's what we plan to do. We're going to establish a presence in every major city and small town in the United States. We're going to start fighting for our children, and we're going to start fighting for the American way of life. 
And we're going to start teaching spirituality to our children so they can have some type of foundation in God and they can be saved. Wonderful. Well, Pastor, we uh, we sure appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank you for your efforts to protect the children from this uh, filth and and wickedness that has permeated so many areas of life. Um, please keep us updated on your efforts, and uh, we yes, will be following up. And thanks again for what you're doing, folks. Uh, that was Pastor David Lowry. Uh, he's up in Illinois doing all kinds of wonderful work, uh, protecting the children and uh, doing what he can to uh, spread the truth and spread the good news. Folks, uh, I have a talk show as well uh, called Let the Truth Be Told. Uh, we air every Saturday. You can catch us on Facebook Live. If you need uh, to find us, go to my Facebook page, David L. Lowry Jr. I'll friend you. But this show uh, airs every Saturday at 1 o'clock Central, and we take it on the issues. We tell the truth. Uh, we put God first, and he's really blessing us. So if you want to tune in, check out my Facebook page. Uh, or you can reach out for me, 708-663-5262. I don't have a problem with traveling, coming to churches, preaching the word of God, as well as going out into your community and addressing the issues to help our people. And we must, we must put God first again. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Pastor. So you heard I've been on the show. It's a great show, folks. So go check that out. Uh, again, I'm Alex Newman. This is Conversations That Matter for the New American. We appreciate you tuning in. And uh, we'll be back with you guys soon. Thanks and God bless.